Conrad, have you ever walked alone in your career? You can't walk alone, especially in a business as large as mine. Uh, we are on television coast to coast right this second because tonight, Conrad Hilton, this is your life. Are you now ready, Mr. Hilton, to deliver your checks? Yes, I'm now ready. Here's a check for uh, $57 million. In addition to creating new jobs and new money, Hilton sees his international hotels as a contribution to world peace. And I said, someday, I'm going to buy that hotel. That's true. You have to dream. What would Mother say now? What would Gus say? The largest hotel in the world, now a Hilton. Our company on the New York Stock Exchange. And the greatest of them all, my dream. Guess you'd say I finally had arrived. I had it made. A long way. I, we, have come a long way. It all started here, New Mexico. In a place like this, this high, this wide, you can dream big dreams. It demands that you do. Mother taught me faith. My father, Gus, taught me work. Faith and work. I guess I taught myself to dream. To accomplish big things, I am convinced you must first dream big dreams. Even when things seem to go sour, you can take something good out of them. Like the time of the currency panic in 1907. All of my father's fortune and most of his business was wiped out. Pretty much all we had left was stock on our store shelves that we couldn't move. Manpower, me and my brother Carl. And we had the biggest rambling house in New Mexico territory, right across from the train station on the main line. Location, location, location. This added up to one thing, the first Hilton Hotel. Mother did the cooking and all of us pitched in. Within a matter of months, the hotel was doing well. With a lot of work and faith, we saw bright sunlight ahead. Then the war came and changed a lot of things. When I got back from the war, I wanted to be a banker. So I set out for the oil fields in Texas. Well, I went down to buy a bank right after the war, uh, 1919, in a little town in Cisco, Texas. And uh, the banker had agreed to, to sell me this little small bank, and then he raised me $5,000, and it made me mad, and I was staying at this hotel, and I happened to ask the hotel proprietor how much money he was making, and, and he told me he was making a lot of money. So I says, I'd like to buy your hotel. Here's where I don't become a banker, and I'm going to become a hotel man. And that's what happened, that's and what you happened. certainly did. And so, in 1919, in Cisco, Texas, Connie began life as a hotel man. And the hospitality business had its first true modern master of the art. It would be many years before anyone else would attempt to challenge his mastery. Hilton earned his early success by purchasing hotels when they were unprofitable, and then turning each one into a gold mine. Hilton's hotels provided sparkling clean accommodations, motivated staff, and great value for the guest. The Hilton organization created a whole new way of minimizing costs and maximizing service to the guest. No one had ever seen anything like it. Connie traveled by car, train, and plane, shopping for new properties. Everywhere a new Hilton Hotel opened, he planted his personal sense of hospitality. It isn't just a building that makes a good hotel. It isn't fancy chrome trimmings in the bathroom or delicate crystal on the dining room table. It isn't even service alone. It's a warmer, deeper, more human thing than any of these. It's sincerity, hospitality, a glowing, living thing that people feel the minute they cross the threshold. In 1924, he built the first true Hilton in Dallas, an all-new modern hotel. It was the talk of the industry. By 1927, Hilton had eight hotels operating and more on the way. That same year, J. Willard Marriott entered the hospitality business with a nine-stool root beer stand in Washington, D.C. In 1929, Conrad Hilton announced that he would build a premier hotel facing historic Pioneer Plaza in El Paso, Texas, 
for $1,750,000. 11 days later, the stock market crashed. Things got tougher and tougher, but I wasn't about to declare bankruptcy. That was quitting, and I wasn't about to quit. Every morning when I left church, I was full of hope that something would happen. I was so broke, I did not even know how I would feed my family or get gas for my car so I could try to find investors to help me out. Then a young bellboy came up to me and saved the whole thing. I remember so well, the roof started caving in. When Mr. Hilton was over a million and a half in debt. Sheriff was going to close his hotel. However, he never lost faith. When things looked darkest, it was Eddie Fowler here who uh, helped give you confidence to continue. Now, how was that, Mr. Hilton? Well, Eddie came to me one day and he said, Mr. Hilton, he said, I know what you're going through. Here's $300, he said. This is eating money for you. Take it, and I know someday you're going to pay it back. With this money, you're able to go to Galveston, where you merge the Hilton Hotels with another chain, thus saving your sinking ship. About two weeks, Mr. Hilton come back to Dallas. He gave me back my $300 plus $50. <laughs> and he said, Eddie, I believe we got it made. <laughs> yeah. Connie worked his way back out of what he called a long, dark valley. And of course, he dreamed. It was a presumptuous, an outrageous time to dream. In 1931, I saw a photograph of the new Waldorf Astoria and read of its magnificent luxuries. I cut that picture out and wrote across it the greatest of them all. It was a glimpse of the mountains, the wide horizons I had nearly forgotten. By 1937, his debts paid in full. He owned more than 17 hotels. Like a desert wind, he swept across America, acquiring the great hotels of the land. In 1946, Hilton became the first hotel company listed on the New York Stock Exchange. And in October of 49, Conrad Hilton became the man who bought the Waldorf Astoria. The name Hilton was now gaining celebrity status. In 1954, Hilton purchased the Statler Hotel System, and the largest real estate transaction ever made since the Louisiana Purchase. Everyone was playing catch up to the man whose name the world equated with hotel, Hilton. In the ensuing years, Life Magazine would declare the three brand names most recognized by consumers worldwide were American Express, Coca-Cola, and Hilton. By the early 60s, Hilton was so famous and his hotels so well known that when a Hilton hotel opened anywhere in the world, it was a major event. Hilton dazzled guests and the competition with continuous innovation, creating a reputation for luxurious comfort at a reasonable cost. But more than that, Conrad was convinced that genuine warmth and hospitality were key, and that hotels should be places that spread peace and understanding. Conrad Hilton believed in working hard to make dreams real, and then he always dreamed again, because he knew that it was important to be able to change and grow. Today, Conrad Hilton's dream has grown into a family of thousands of hotels worldwide, each unique and different, designed to fulfill the needs of travelers of all kinds, yet sharing a common philosophy of hospitality. There's a bright new world out there, Hilton's world. It has been and continues to be our responsibility to fill the earth with the light and warmth of hospitality.